What's up and welcome back to the Kind of Funny Screencast, where each and every week we get together to talk about our thoughts on the latest in movie and TV releases. Uh, we have been doing all of the Star Wars Visions reviews. We've released two videos so far, episodes one through three and episodes four through six. So we have to take it all home with episodes seven through nine. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. Hello. The producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. I'm going to do this. Nothing cooler than that sound. And the Canadian dollars to USD, Matt Rohrbeck. Wow. Oh, that's, no, that's no good. That means I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how's it going? Thanks for having me, guys. It's going very, very well. Excited to talk to you all about this. Remember, you can get the show on YouTube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com. If you want to get it as a podcast, just search your favorite podcast service for kind of funny screencast and we'll be right there for you. And I got to be honest, uh, our, our kind of funny screencast podcast feed, it does not have nearly as many subscribers as it should. I was looking at the numbers yesterday and I was quite surprised. Uh, so if you guys could go subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Tim Geddes. It would mean a lot to the Nitro Rifle Andy Cortez. And I don't know what it would mean to Nick, but I'm hoping it's a good thing. The world. The world. <laughs> world. Good. Wow. Good. Good. Uh, so today we are talking about episode seven, The Elder, episode eight, Lop and Ocho, and episode nine, Akakiri. Before we get into them, we're going to go episode by episode. Just overall, what are your thoughts about these three, Andy Cortez? Um, I was not the biggest fan of the first episode i think it maybe had the most potential for me and i was kind of underwhelmed with it but i really really dug the kind of dark unhappy endings of the final two episodes i fucking mm -hmm. loved it i really dug those episodes and i think uh aside from the tone and the grit that we were shown um i liked the characters a lot and the art styles on those were fucking phenomenal like with the eighth episode it, it straight up was like, what is the budget on this? This looks like a movie. Yeah. Like this, this is movie type quality uh, anime that we're looking at right now. As, especially when it comes to like the stuff that you can easily gloss over. Of here's a two second shot of a car driving, but goddamn, look at this environment art. <laughs> like somebody yeah. took, a, you know, two weeks to draw this, and we see it for two seconds. Uh, I really, really dug the final two episodes. Uh, first one, um, you know, it was fine. Nick Scarpino. Um, I liked them. I liked them. I think a, a, as a trilogy, it'll be interesting to see where these uh, line up against the other two uh, or the other two groups of movies that we did. Um, I'm kind of with Andy where the first one I, I enjoyed and I enjoyed it based largely on the concept. And also I thought David Harbour did a really good job as sort of this sort of like reserved mentor character. Um, so I think the voice acting was great. Not a lot there though. When you, when you start breaking down the story, what the one that really resonated with me was um, Akakari, which is, is that, that's how you say it, right? probably okay uh <laughs> i the ending of that i was like that's this is a really cool and great use of the medium of the short film uh it just kind of tells you everything you need to know it doesn't fill in a ton of details you don't really understand the relationship too much between him uh and uh the the, the princess i think she's a princess in this but just the end of her of him going to the dark side because we've never really seen a story like that of a Jedi that's torn and then gets pulled over the dark side, other than, of course, Anakin, uh, who did it to save Padme from a dream. Yeah. So I thought this was pretty cool. And I love the difference in the art styles. I didn't love the, the middle one as much because I feel like it was they needed 20 more minutes in it to really flesh it out and make it something worthwhile. It's never a great sign when it starts off with a ton of exposition where it's like, OK, let me just tell you where we're at right now so you can understand what's going on with the story. Uh, but by the end of it, I'm like, I want to see what's ha what's going to happen. I want to see her go chase after her sister. Um, but we just don't get that. So overall, very enjoyable. But I don't think the strongest of all of the Star Wars Visions episodes. Matt Roy back. Uh, I really think this series is like a masterclass in how to do like an anthology series. Like, I just love that each episode self-contained, different creators, different art style. And I just think their batting average on these were like, you know, really, really high. I think there was only a couple episodes uh, I, you know, thought were okay. And yeah, I kind of agree with The Elder where it was the first episode that um, I felt like was maybe too short. Like I felt by, like it went by too quickly and we didn't get enough there. Uh, the Lop and Ocho episode, I think is phenomenal. The art style there just completely landed with me. I love that film grain on there. And then the Akakiri episode. I'm surprised they ended with that because uh, it is kind of a, a dark and sort of depressing ending. So uh, to end the whole series and have that as episode nine, uh, 
um, I think is really, really interesting. But yeah, the series as a whole has been fantastic. And I think like at worst, they've been like three out of fives, even the episodes yeah. I didn't like. And then yeah. most episodes are like a four or five out of five, which is like saying for an anthology series, because usually they're very like hit or miss. Yeah, I'm really aligned with the, pretty much what all you guys are saying. I, I do think that uh, the experience I had last night watching these three back to back is a testament to the importance of sequencing of things, because I do think that episode seven is probably my least favorite of all of them. And it kind of left a sour taste in my mouth. So like even going into eight, as much as I love the art style, I agree with Nick. It's like it was one of the longer ones. I think that one was like 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, And it allowed us to like be interested in these characters and the story they're telling and it felt more like a movie but then because of that it felt rushed it felt like we weren't getting enough of the world yeah. and it was just like it's good that it left me wanting more but that following up episode seven the elder that was kind of like oh, okay there's an apprentice named dan that's gonna make yeah. nick laugh I... uh, for sure Hi. Uh, I don't want dan. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it wasn't a bad episode like at all like the like matt was saying i think even at worst these are a three out of five but i do think that these three um, if placed differently in the order of the episodes, I think I might have enjoyed uh, eight and nine a lot more because watching them, I was kind of like, mm, damn, this uh, brought my ex visions experience down just a little bit as opposed to last week where I'm like, I fucking can't wait for more of this. Now I'm like, all right, I'm excited for a season two, but like, I, I, I'm not upset we don't have more to to keep going down. Yeah. Um, but I, I want to give a, a huge shout out to the fact that of these three that I'm talking about, the Lop and Ocho episode eight was my favorite of them. And watching the trailer stuff, it's like, Oh, the bunny girl. I don't want to see this. Yeah. Like, same. That's, that's going to be one of my least favorite episodes. And it wasn't like, I, uh, you know, can't judge a book by its cover. So shout out to that. Yeah. I was, um, I, I think I would have been a lot more underwhelmed had episode eight and nine not ended in kind of, you know, not, super happy ways i you know I, I kind of expected them all to, to end in very positive ways but i i like the sort of darker tone towards the end of it um with la penocho uh, episode eight i was really kind of hoping that uh, i i know we can kind of criticize the star wars universe for like man it's a whole gigantic universe and like you know twi'leks aren't twi'leks 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 twi'lek twi'leks aren't everywhere like you know, why are they like if you're going to have all these anthology series, you know what I mean? Like you can't have the same race of aliens everywhere because they don't exist everywhere. Like we kind of like use that logic. But I would have rather the bunny girl been a Twi'lek <laughs> and not uh, a bunny girl. It just seemed kind of off and it didn't feel super Star Warsy. But I loved I loved that family struggle. And I really thought that the daughter was going to come around and kind of totally. like, you know what? You're right. I have to be there for my family. And the fact that she just peaced out and that sad ending of the hologram at the end. Like I was like, God damn, I'm yeah. ready for the next one. And then the yeah. final one, I, I really dug and uh, especially the final one's art style. Episode nine's art style was so, so unique and it didn't look like all the other ones. It had a very different kind of, here's how we're drawing our characters yeah. and it's still anime, but it's not kind of what you're used to. And I, I just enjoyed so much of the, uh, the approach to making that one look pretty unique. I didn't like the eyes. They're creepy. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I just kind of, I kind of liked it. It reminded me of watching like, I don't know, when you're first watching anime as a kid and you're kind of used to everything looking like Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z, but mm -hmm. then you see the weird one where it's like, what the hell is Big O? And these characters don't look like anime, but I guess it's anime. It was. It kind of reminds me of that. I like the. Uh, there's a shot in that one that I think is my favorite out of all three of these when he when the the Sith uh, sister takes his hand. And you see the red power kind of pulse from her arm into his, and you realize he's sort of like completed his transformation into the dark side. It's pretty, it's awesome. And then of course the she, her waking up and looking over him as he walks away, just that that long that wide shot. I, I just think it's super cool. I, I think I think this this whole series, um, to Matt's earlier point, is just is is very special. And I think it's important because. You know, to Andy's earlier point of saying, like, hey, this doesn't read as Star Wars, right? Well, it doesn't necessarily read, like, the La Panocha episode reads more, to me, like, anime than it does as Star Wars. But it's such, there's such interesting thought starters on how to expand, or what the Star Wars universe can be. And I do think that we've been, 
so you know as as star wars in general has been just so pigeonholed into this tiny little thing where it's just jedis and it's just this and that then you know so to see them kind of stretch out and say let's let's get weird let's do some weird what about a bunny uh you know a a character and and you sympathize with them by the end it's like it's it's cool it could be a lot bigger than it is right now so i'm I'm glad to see i i I really want to see more of this it's this has been a cool experience and, and I, 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 I kind of forgot uh, to talk about episode seven, where I was pretty un- underwhelmed with it because it was what it seemed to be. And I feel like a lot of these yeah. episodes have had that yeah. sort of that twist. moment where you go, oh, shit, that's what's happening. We talk about the last episode we did uh, regarding the colors of the lightsabers and they're all Sith. Oh, wow. What yeah, a cool twist. Jedi, whatever it was. And the fact that episodes eight and nine end on such a somber note. And seven was just kind of what it was. And I, I agree with Nick. I love David Harbour's performance. It really reminded me of Liam Neeson doing an American accent. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I kind of got a lot of vibes in there. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought that there would be an extra twist with this elder and who is he? And oh, it's not what we seemed. It's not what it seemed to be. This is a really cool twist. No, it just kind of was what it was. Yeah, yeah talking about that episode, the the elder. So let's do, do a little deeper dive on that. The yeah. the fun voice cameos there. We got Jordan, or not cameos, but voices there are Jordan Fisher as Dan. Mm-hmm. Dan. <laughs> Which is come on, like, are you I serious? <laughs> yeah, uh, Dan. Obi Wan Kenobi. But... You got like yeah. Qui Gon Jinn and Anakin. Dan. Dan. Uh, then we got I David Harbour. Which is great. Yeah, me too. And uh, the old man. Do you know James who it was? Long, baby. James Hong, baby. James Hong, the old James dude Hong. from Balls of Fury, Andy. Balls of Fury, but more importantly, <laughs> from Big Trouble in Little China, where he played yeah, Mr. Yeah. David Lopan, the evil, uh, you know, uh, the bad guy in that movie. So it's cool to see him sort of reprise that role eh, to a degree in this and just be kind of bad and have that sinister voice again. So cool. God, we um, did a Balls of Fury review, huh? We yeah, did. We did. did. You, you guys got through the entire movie. And man. We watched it because of you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> welcome so you know sorry. it's interesting talking about this episode in particular because uh andy you're you're hitting a point that i totally agree with where it's like i think that we're all kind of a little let down by it because it kind of just gave us exactly the thing that we think we want from star wars like it starts off with the going through hyperspace and then he has a little apprentice braid and like they go thing. through their journey it's like it's so i mean i fucking love that thing Nikki oh i love it god damn so respect cool. i uh, hate it but then it's like then he has the green lightsaber and it's like and he does the cool lightsaber kill where he like holds it to him and then turns it on like all the stuff it's like okay we've seen this before you know it's cool but we've seen it before and like that's kind of the biggest letdown um of the whole thing for me but it did get me thinking about how we always talk about star wars and everything needs to connect and it's always back to tattooing and like the prequels especially it's like what did they have from the original trilogy that they can like refer back to and i've never thought about how silly it is that the Jedi just all wear these brown robes. And that's simply because Obi-Wan was the only Jedi and he had a brown robe. So then in the prequels, they're like, everyone gets a brown robe. No, but he wasn't the only one that had a brown robe. Uncle Ben dressed like that too. That was just how people dressed on a desert planet. On Tatooine. That is such a good It had nothing to do with the Jedi. And then all of a sudden, and this this is like a huge issue. And this is what I'm talking about earlier, right? Is that everything's so generic when it comes to that to the Jedi and Star Wars these days that it's cool to see them try to take some risks with it why did you like remember the original trilogy Luke didn't wear any of that in fact the only thing that he came, he wore that came close to it was an all black robe that was dope right before that he had his white outfit which is in uh, turn of the or empire strikes back and then he wore like a, a kind of another white roby thing but because he's from tatooine right because he's from that desert planet so that's why it's so fun to like that's so why funny. i have that 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 reaction to the the you know ponytail. the the ponytail <laughs> and the need to adhere to this sort of warrior monk style that they have with the Jedi, I'm like, that's so boring. It's so redundant. Like, let them wear something else. Let them, you know, I don't know. It's that that's that's a major problem. I think they have to overcome when they're going forward with Star Wars and Jedi stories in general. But that's why I it's really, like when you played the game, it was so cool because you had uh, I forget Cal's character, right? It was in the name of uh, Fallen Order. Just wear whatever you want to wear. It looks cool. Like him wa- running around a poncho. Well, well, to be fair, it wasn't <laughs> whatever you want to wear. It was only ponchos. It was like seven <laughs> hey. to 15 different ponchos. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I was I was at a department store over the weekend. Capes are coming oh. back in. For oh, yeah, let's do it. So, Kevin is excited. Oh, of course he is. <laughs> But I'm just I, saying, like, it's 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 so cool to have them be able to express themselves a little bit more through that. That's why this one, I think, was just, like, paint by numbers. Let's play a little homage mm-hmm. to, like, the, to the to the prequel trilogies. And those aren't my favorite. Yeah, I want I, to, uh, I want to just point out uh, in episode seven really quick that the early on in the episode, I thought the twist was going to be that 
the apprentice was setting up the master for some sort of double cross. Right. Um, and, and I think a lot of it was just the way that we think about um, the apprentice always sort of wanting to do extra and wanting to be mm -hmm. extra and always wanting to like, oh, I can go over there. And it, it, he just felt really kind of like go get him. And I thought he was going to lead the match into some sort of betrayal. And it just it was just pretty underwhelming. I was like, ah, I, it it made me really not look forward to episodes eight and nine. And luckily those I think outperformed. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. I thought I thought two things. Either one, it was going to be about the apprentice, like having to beat this old man. And Dan was going to have to be like sort of like psychically talking to him through the force or it was going to be a revenge flick where the old guy's like, hey, I, I'm I'm setting you up. I We have a personal stake in this and it's going to be like a, a, a duel between the two of us. Get the kid out of here. But it ended up just being kind of straightforward. Matt? I did like that the kind of whole circle of life kind of thing like I, I and that everyone kind of dies and that your power kind of either dwindles as you get older or doesn't and just depending on how you live your life and like I like how the episode kind of had the young kids in this little village and then you have mm. the young Padawan then you have the Jedi and then you have the old Sith and then it kind of just was about the circle of life and I liked that kind of like I I'm with you guys where I was kind of underwhelmed by the whole thing but there were elements in there that I thought were interesting I just this was the one one, like I mentioned before, where the runtime being only like 12 minutes or so, I feel like it doesn't really go deep into any of that and just kind of shows that but doesn't do anything more. Uh, I do like um, the design of the Elder himself, like and even the villains in all three of these episodes, which we'll yeah. go through, I think are actually really, really cool. And uh, the one thing I haven't really seen, I, I love the like steam coming off of the lightsaber too. That, in that was one badass. moment I thought was awesome. Um, so I, I do think that there are some cool moments, but I, I do agree that with you guys that it was it just felt very straightforward and the pink lightning's dope too that we're just oh absolutely yeah that, this did. whole scene was cool this episode is brought to you by overland cozy season is upon us and if anybody out there knows me they know that i love being cozy i love being comfortable and now i've learned there's nothing better for my feet to achieve that than these overland sheepskin slippers i've been loving it they are so soft they're so high quality and the biggest thing that impresses me is her whole life g has been like i'm not a slipper person guess what i'm catching her in these slips every day now she looks so damn comfy you gotta love it overland uses expert craftsmanship to pair the highest quality merino sheepskin which is naturally moisture wicking temperature regulating and antimicrobial with supportive memory foam midsoles to make slippers that feel and wear better for longer don't wait another day to slip into something way more comfortable get the best high quality sheepskin slippers on the market at overland.com slash kind of funny you'll get free shipping and free returns and i recommend you go today because these slippers are so beloved that they've been known to sell out that's overland.com slash kind of funny overland.com slash kind of funny o-v-e-r-l-a-n-d.com slash kind of funny next up shout out to Babel. a lot of us are thinking about travel again but not knowing the language of our destination can make even the simplest things harder but you can change that with Babbel, the number one selling language learning app. Their short lessons on practical topics from menus to directions to local culture make it a travel essential. Greg Miller's been using Babbel to learn a little bit more French so he can impress Jen and it's been going very, very well. Babbel's 15 minute lessons make it easy for learning on a busy schedule. Other language learning programs rely on AI, but Babbel works with language experts to create their lessons. And Babbel's teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, and German, even Turkish and Indonesian. Plus, their speech recognition technology can help you improve your pronunciation and accent, because even if you are a tourist, you don't need to sound like one. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code MORNING. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com code MORNING. Babbel language for life. And finally, shout out to Raycon. There's so much going on right now, whether it's stuff you're excited about, like traveling or stuff you'd rather avoid, like traffic. You can't always control the vibes out there, but you can control the vibes in your own head when you've got a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ears. Cool Greg's been training for a half marathon, and as he's been getting his run on, as he's been working out, he's been listening to his jams using his everyday Raycons. He's been loving them. Uh, Raycon's new everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better 
better than ever. They've got an improved rubber oil look and feel and optimized gel tips for a perfect in-ear fit. Plus, you get three new sound profiles, so the sound is great no matter what you're listening to, whether it's a podcast like this, rock music, EDM, hip hop, it's all cool. Raycon start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound every bit as good. Right now, Kind of Funny listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash kindoffunny. That's buyraycon.com slash kindoffunny to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash kindoffunny. I did like the Elder's sort of nature uh, and what he felt about the Sith. I, do, I did sort of like his perspective, but I don't really know what his purpose was like i and i guess that's part of the mystery and i think that's why we enjoy a lot of these is like we don't know who that character is we don't know what their background mm -hmm. is but we're mm -hmm. seeing them now and we yeah, can all sort of yeah. think about it and talk about it and that kind of adds to the conversation but i liked him being like oh no no the sith no 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 i'm not a sith dude no they've they've they're yeah. fucking idiots they all they do is argue with each other and then so the guy's like, so you're not a Sith or what is it? And I was yeah. kind of sitting there like, yeah, well, what is it? <laughs> like, <laughs> who are you? You know what I mean? Who are you? But I like yeah, that my, too, right? The same. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, I was going to say, I know I've already joked about this like five times, but it's still funny to me. Like my favorite line that I wrote, wrote down is just quote, be safe, Dan. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> I have sounded no, like David Harbour when you just I literally okay, have, let, me, let me close my I eyes. Have a, me, Tim. I have a note that just says Dan. Dan the Jedi. Dan. <laughs> Dan the Jedi. It's fucking great. I'm Dan, Dan. Dan the Jedi. You want to <laughs> move Danny on Adam to here. Lopin Ocho? Well, I do. I want to point out that the, the the one thing I did like about this was exactly the same thing I was railing against earlier, right? Which is that he they talk about Sith and for as as sort of uh, 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 closed off or rather limited uh, is the word I'm looking for for the Jedi story. The Sith is the same thing, right? The counterpart is just just like oh, the Sith are all this generic evil, just always doing evil. And so the fact that there's one of them, it's like no. I'm gonna do. I'm. I'm still gonna use the dark side of the force, but I'm. I don't want all that infighting bullshit ego. I'm just gonna go do my own thing. I found that to be really, really compelling. Yeah. Uh. So next up, we have episode eight, Lop and Ocho. Uh. The voice voices for this one, no one caught my eye. Uh. Of somebody that I knew. I don't know if you guys uh, know them. Look. No, I don't think so. Not for me. But yeah, th this one, my God, the freaking art, the background art specifically Gorgeous. is gorgeous absolutely stunning it like this is probably my favorite visually of the the whole show oh with that completely yeah and a and a cath hearts from um uh that series joey and i love on uh to all the boys oh, i love before she yeah. plays the younger mm. the younger sister hell yeah. oh really yeah that's when fun lot, yeah <laughs> and I don't, I don't recognize the other two actors but yeah she's awesome on that yeah this one definitely had the most filmic feel to me uh and a lot of it is cart the film grain <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure it feels it feels well, really natural it felt like i was watching a dvd release of a movie that came out in 1982 mm -hmm. uh and and it's here now and it's in hd and like oh finally we have it like in in nice quality um i thought i i really dug this episode i and a lot of it was because of the characters and sort of mm -hmm. the background that we're seeing with this you know person who's trying to join a family and then this sister sort of I liked hearing the sisters sort of struggles with what the empire was doing there and saying, look, the, we don't like the empire, but we wouldn't be getting fed if it wasn't for the empire. We yeah. wouldn't have this thing. And then just having that inner fighting of, of the dad being like, yeah, but they are that I forgot. I forget what the line was, but it's, it was like, yeah, they're, they're being diplomatic about how they're taking over, Yeah, they're like, basically but they're like still taking over our resources. <laughs> yeah. They're, still, they're, they're plundering our planet, but you know, and you see that, but too, they're right? being you nice about it. And they're yeah. like, hey, we're going to feed you and you're going to be taken care of. I, I just I really dug the sort of tone uh, and, and a lot of the not necessarily dialogue, but just sort of the writing and the story of all of this. Um, and I really expected it to have a happy ending and for it to not. I, I'm just not used to that with a whole lot of Star Wars stories. And I thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, I totally agree. And I think it's what Nick was saying earlier, too, of like, and I think we said it in previous episodes of like, why this show is great, because I think we can get pockets of the Star Wars universe. And it, it this episode does obviously involve a lightsaber and sort of the Jedi. But then ultimately, what we're seeing is a Star Wars planet and like imperial imp uh, oppression, and which is something that I feel like, you know, we've seen in the background in a lot of Star Wars movies, but it's cool to kind of focus on one family and how, you know, even some of the themes that were in The Last Jedi, I know, you know, we don't need to go into that but like even that like you know anyone can be a jedi or it's not just family lineage and i anyone like anyone can cook that. 
Okay. Exactly. Never forget. Never forget. But anyways, yeah, and I I totally agree what uh, Andy was saying with the the film grain and how the just the animation style in this episode and going back to the villain we just saw him too is like I think the most anime looking villain which I just loved. The um, fact that Ocho bites her finger oh God, and wipes that, the blood to that. make eye it. makeup, like. Who is this oh, woman? I, I need to marry this woman. She will like, oh my <laughs> oh, god. Andy, I, no. I will say this this looks like a character that like Andy would do like a voice impression yes. of. Like, oh my god, time. yes. <laughs> Dude, the, my favorite thing about this one is uh, to the to all your guys' point where it's just like this is a world that I want to know more of. I really wish this was a feature film that could really yeah. kind of like allow its characters to grow and have, you know, more thematic relevance because there's even with what they gave us, it's really damn cool and interesting. But my favorite thing about it is how it plays with the Star Wars canon because it doesn't need to be canon they can kind of say things and do things that are cool that we haven't seen before and them talking about the ancient jedi lore like the implications of that whole backstory thing it's like it is not the same history we know of jedi and how this all works and i kind of like that the way it presents the story it kind of feels like this could be in the distant future from yeah. any of the star wars we even know and like the empire the empire that we're seeing is not nearly the same empire that we're used to and like this could have been in in modern times or something not a galaxy far far away a long time ago so i thought that yeah, was I really mean, cool i i agree and i and uh yeah i mean i, w- I would watch uh, this was my least favorite most only because i wanted I, I wanted this to be an hour and a half i wanted to see how this story was going to go because i think the i mean i think the concept of imperialism and having them and, and having that sort of like conflict is fascinating it's fascinating to see like there are are there benefits i mean they paint a few benefits right in the beginning of this of saying like our 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 planet is struggling to keep up technologically and we are with a lot of infighting and i forget how they set it up and the empire offered us resources and we took advantage of those it's a cool it's a, it's a very complex thing to play around with and it's something that i don't think the star wars universe has really touched upon um i love seeing back- her struggle with it nick i i yeah. i i wasn't expecting the daughter to sort of you know like when you watch Black Panther and you're like Michael B. Jordan you got a lot of points you know <laughs> like and, and I think a lot of oppressors kind of paint their taking over and they try to paint it in a positive light and I think it, I think they nailed it very but I mean even I mean it's a very very real world thing that's happening right now and it's something that that a lot of superpowers do right our country is not you know the United States does this all the time we go in and we say hey we're going to help you out but we're also going to mine a lot of your natural resources and we're going to sort of you know impose a military force to quote unquote you know, protect those, whether we are doing that or not, I don't know. But, but it's, it's fascinating to see those parallels between that and, 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 and what's happening currently in modern day in, in real life. Keep and politics I think out of my Star Wars. Well, <laughs> yeah. Right. But, and, 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 you know, obviously like we don't want to go too, too full tilt into it because it is, it is a fantasy genre, but I do think that when they tell, when they're able to sort of cross into the, that, that level of realism, it hits on a, a better level for me. And it makes me a lot more interested as opposed to just, you know, the, uh, uh, the elder story, which is just like generic Jedi, generic Sith guy. Let's go against each other. Cool. It's cool. But you're going to give me an hour and a half of that. I'm going to be, I'm going to be bored 20 minutes in. Cause I'm going to want a little bit more conflict and a little bit more for the characters, uh, you know, room for the characters to grow. And we see that in this, right? We see that we see the two sisters sort of having that and then yeah. coming to different conclusions by the end of it. Uh, Andy from, kind and of especially funny. just having that quick moment of Ocho seeing the blue lights. It was being like, those are mine. What, why, why do you have these lightsabers? You're not his real daughter. I'm his real daughter, you know? And just yeah. seeing that interfamily struggle, I thought was really right. uh, well kind of presented the, the, to the audience. The switch flipped, right? Where she was yeah. like, she was the first person to say, you're going to be my sister. And the dad was hesitant of it. And then later, as she sort of got, went more and more into that murky dark side, she's like, no, 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 no. Now I want these things for myself. It's that yeah. selfishness of, of wanting the resource, of wanting the power and all that stuff. It's, it's a, It was an interesting story. And we get the I am your father line, which is fun. Yes, which uh, is fantastic. Uh, Matt, what, one, you had your hand raised? Yeah, one thing. Uh, I loved Lop's design, actually. Like, I liked her kind of rabbit design. I like her, like, Dragon Ball Z scout. I didn't like the scarf. Uh, I think. Oh, you it didn't? Bothered. Okay. No, it bothered I, me. The little fluffy scarf. I was like, ah, it, feels like she, she, it, it felt like in a joke. Like, if this were a joke uh, cartoon, she would take that off and, like, hang it up on a, <laughs> on, like, a coat <laughs> hanger when she wants uh, to. <laughs> Um, and then the design of the lightsaber I thought was incredible, Dope. like in that box and how they unbox it. And then it's the first time I've seen on a lightsaber, they had like the insignia on like yeah, the side, in, like the characters the like on the Sick. actual blade. That I was thought Sick. was incredible. So like just, yeah, going back to the art style, there's the lightsaber right there. And it's it's phenomenal. And, and I do love, so cool. I love that one moment. And I'm sure you guys caught it too, where she actually like pulls the lightsaber to her. 
So she, yeah. she actually uses the force for a hot. Yeah, it was one of the sighs or whatever that her dad. Oh, it was. It was. It was a sigh, and then yeah. she like cut her sister and like give a big old axe. And I was like, "Is this in the X Men franchise?" Uh, <laughs> uh, and then the uh, last episode, episode nine, Akakiri. The uh, interesting things here: we got George Takei as Senshu. Fuck yes. Yeah. Uh, we have you. Henry Golding as uh, Subaki and Jamie Chung as Misa. Jamie Hell Chung. Yeah. Uh, graduated Lowell High School, the same high school I graduated in 2001, go. and then attended the University of California Riverside. Nick, so she went to UC wow. Riverside. She went I to UC Riverside, but like it was, she came back to my high school and like spoke at like not graduation, but at some event. It was just so funny. I have always had a crush on Jamie Chung. Yep. Love her. Love her. Didn't we all? This episode, fucking awesome. I wanted it like Nick with the last episode. I want this. I wanted this one to be a full, a full feature movie. Um, I just thought it was I loved those moments of kind of silence with some of the characters. And it's not always you we're having to fill in a bunch of dialogue. You kind of can gather what's happening and what the relationships are without necessarily getting a whole lot of exposition. I just thought this episode was like one of my favorites of all of these, honestly. <laughs> I mean, and shout out. I was going to just get, do a quick shout out to um, Henry Golding as well who uh, is killing the game and everything that I see him in. Recently, I, I just watched The Gentleman again, uh, maybe like a couple weeks ago. I was like, like, everyone's great in this movie. But yeah, Andy, um, agreed. I also, one of the things I wanted to point out was that like, you know, you get a varying degree of what the Jedi powers are in all of these, right? Some people are flipping all around. Some people are throwing their lightsaber. In this one, I love the way he fights because it is more just like a close quarters sword fight. Samurai. Yeah, yeah it's very, very samurai, right? And I love the style of animation where it like pauses for a second and then kind of goes. So you get a mm -hmm. sense of inertia as he's blocking and kind of coming in and it's a little bit irregular, but it kind of works for it. And, and again, a lot to Andy's earlier point, a lot to the imagination here. We're not given too much here. We're, we're just kind of filling in a lot of these details for ourselves. Like we don't really know the backstory of these characters. We get, we get a minor flashback, but when we do get a flashback, he, when he's a younger Jedi, is wearing something super fucking cool, which is like a different take on on the robe with the big ass shoulder pads. I'm yeah. like, that's dope. I love that. You just um, love shoulder pads. I don't blame you. <laughs> I mean, dude. I mean, they make me. They make you taller. Yep. 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 That's how do. that works. Yeah. This episode is rich for me, where I feel like. I am only kind of down on it because it was the last one. And with an anthology series, it's always hard because it's not like a season finale. It's not like it needs to up the stakes at all. But this one kind of just felt familiar. And I, I feel like especially uh, a lot of the the visuals that we're getting here kind of reminded me of the Ahsoka episode of Mandalorian season two. So I, I kind of was taken out of it a bit where I'm like, it felt a little been there, done that mm -hmm. um, without like this whole scene right here is like straight out of <laughs> Mandalorian season two. Um, and I, that just kind of distracted me and I wasn't really in love with the art style and stuff. I think the choreography was cool, but this definitely wasn't my favorite. And some of the music choices really stood out to me. Like there's this like extended bongo song. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was like, dude, I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it too. Yeah. I don't know why. Like, and trust me, I'm I'm self-aware in that moment of like, this shouldn't be fucking with me, but it's fucking with me. And I'm digging this actually, like, because especially when the betrayal moment happens and our lead character is walking away from the woman that he just saved. He, you know, he, I think that moment is so cool of, I re I rewatched and rewound that moment so many times to see the villain kind of controlling uh, the princess and pushing her towards him and him just in a fit of rage shooting it. And you get that flashback of that's what, that's the vision he's that's been seeing all along. Having the nightmare. Yeah. Takes the mask off, realizes he just killed her. And then the villain saying, we can bring her back. You just got to join me. That's and cool. him him doing it and then Master. the music continues and it's still like it's not music that necessarily sounds somber or sad or right there. like this is what a bummer of an ending like it doesn't feel like that twilight zone kind of this is a very negative moment and you should feel like shit yeah <laughs> but it's still i still kind of it, it gave me every feeling that i needed to to feel that and um i thought it was awesome i really dug that twist at the end it's a good emotional ending, but I, I do. I think I'm kind of more on Tim's side here than I think your guys were. I, I liked this episode, but now watching the whole series twice again, this was the one where being the last episode, I thought it'd be memorable, but I completely forgot about this until I watched it the second time. And I'm still kind of in the middle of it where, yeah, the art style 
I don't love. Uh, I'm with Tim with the music, um, but I do like that kind of emotional and dark ending. Um, and then I thought the the castle guards looked really cool. Like again, something that we haven't necessarily seen in mm -hmm. Star Wars or doesn't feel very Star Wars. But then the show just does such a great job at either feeling very anime or very Star Wars or somehow mixing those together, so it still feels kind of cool. So like, I love to look at them and how they deflects like the crossbow kind of thing with the lightsaber as well, like the arrow. I thought was really cool. So there are some really dope moments too yeah overall star wars visions major success let us know in the comments below uh what your favorite episode was uh and if you're excited for a potential season two i don't think it's been confirmed yet but i would be surprised if we don't if we don't see more yeah. of this because it's so freaking damn cool uh but we'll be covering all the latest star wars shows including the book of boba fett right here on the kind of funny screencast so make sure you subscribe to the podcast feed man come on till next time love you bye be safe dan